Mr. Mark Reckless. Hmm. Our honourable friend, the member for Penrith and the Border, uh, was previously invited to a Bilderberg conference, and I wonder if the, uh, the, the, the minister, as a member of the steering committee, if he could tell us why he's been dropped. Has he done something wrong? <laughs> No, there's a, every year about half those participating have never been before, and quite a lot of people only come for one meeting. The number of people who come every year is comparatively small. There's a kind of core of which, uh, by, for some extraordinary reason, I have become one of those over about the last uh, uh, decade. The, the, the honourable member for, my honourable friend, the member for Penrith the Border, made a most distinguished contribution, but he should not be disappointed that he wasn't invited next year. Uh, we actually, the British Committee, were actually trying to bring a rising star of a younger generation in, because one of the whole points is we do not want the whole thing to become an ageing establishment to people who used to be something important in government. I have no doubt that one day they will implore my right honourable friend to attend again, my honourable friend to attend again, but I can't guarantee when that will be. Mr. Dennis Skinner. Have you been Dennis? Have you been there, Dennis? I wouldn't be seen dead with them. <laughs> How come? How come that when all those media moguls, the bankers, politicians have been meeting together since 1954, not one of them was able to spot the recession coming, or maybe they caused it. <laughs> we have had trade unions there sometimes, there are plenty of social democrats. I don't think anybody as left-wing as the Honourable Member has ever attended in my experience, but if I scratch my memory I probably remember somebody. Obviously the Honourable Member forecast with absolute precision the course of the forthcoming uh, <laughs> collapse of capitalism in 2007. In that respect, I do agree, his foresight was rather better than that of most pundits. We continue to meet in the hope that next time we'll see it coming with slightly more clarity. <laughs> Mr John Redwood. As many UKIP voters fear that the Bilderberg Group is a plot to promote more unaccountable European government, could my right honourable friend give them any reassurance or suggestion as to why they may be wrong in that thought? <laughs> well, nowadays we get accused of plots to overthrow, the, to establish a government of the world, to poison the local water courses, to plan an invasion of the United States of America. Uh, ten years ago, I was told, I was attending a plot to hand over Britain to Brussels and to subordinators to the United States of Europe. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> The next instalment of the plot comes later. But they're, 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 I used then to point out that a fellow member of the steering committee was Mr Conrad Black. And in private as in public, Mr Conrad Black uh, was not in favour of handing anything over to Brussels and wasn't in any way furthering this cause. Uh, I regret to say that Mr Black is the only member of, who ever attended the article who has since had the misfortune to be sentenced to a sentence of imprisonment, whereupon he has withdrawn from the Bilderberg meetings. Uh, um, but I assure, but seriously, I assure my right honourable friend, there is the full range of opinion uh, from left to right pretty well represented at Bilderberg from across Western Europe. But that in itself shows that the idea we're furthering any kind of agenda is absolute nonsense. If I was plotting to do anything, I would not actually assemble that particular group of people because you would never agree on an object. Watson! Can the Minister confirm he declared his trusteeship of the body that funds the conference to his permanent secretary when he was appointed by the Prime Minister? <laughs> I, I, I congratulate the Honourable Member. I am looking that up because I had forgotten that, that I, I am actually a member of a steering committee. When we were hosting at Watford, uh, I discovered I was actually, by, amongst other things, I'm a trustee of the British steering group, so I am checking with the aid of my constituents to say whether I ever put that in. Did I assure the Honourable Member? I, I had uh, completely forgotten that it, that it was set up on that basis uh, long before the rules were established. The trustee have never met as trustees. All I actually do is sit as a member of a committee and help to play my part in the organisation of a meeting, and that's all I've ever done. Mr. Edward Lee. Um, we've had a bit of fun today, and indeed, who would want to spend a weekend of irredeemable tediousness with a bunch of establishment toffs discussing the world economics? <laughs> but, 
But the serious point is this, surely, and I put this to my right honourable friend. Why on earth does the House of Commons think it's necessary to discuss what's said in a private meeting anyway? I, perhaps my right honourable friend wasn't here when I started. I mean, this is the first time I've ever risen into the House of Commons to answer questions on behalf of a private organisation to which the British government has absolutely no responsibility whatever. <laughs> Mr Philip Davis. Speaker, I know I can't be described as a rising star. Uh, and so, so should, I, should, should, I, should I not presume that my invitation was lost in the post? Uh, but could the... Uh, can the uh, minister explain to us whether or not, either formally or informally, uh, he took the opportunity whilst there to discuss his, uh, his, his uh, campaign to keep the UK within the European Union, and which members of the European Union were actually at this particular conference? Well, I, uh, firstly, he would not be surprised to know that I don't think I'm being too indiscreet to say that the subject of the future of the European Union and Britain's participation it did come up from time to time in the weekend. Uh, uh, in, from many countries, people do have actually quite a strong interest in that subject. So it was discussed, but again, on Chatham House rules, and no conclusions uh, of any kind uh, were reached, I can assure him. Philip Hollowbone, my right honourable friend, the only British citizen on the steering committee, and who does he think his replacement will be? <laughs> no, my, my, the, the, the other members at the moment are John Kerr and Marcus Aegis, and I don't know who my successor will be. Order. We're slightly overrepresented, which probably reflects the quality of debate in this place and elsewhere in the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Order. I think the matters have been very fully explored. Yeah. Statement, the Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Secretary William Hague. Mr Speaker, with permission, I will make a statement on the work of the Government Communications Headquarters, GCHQ, its legal framework and recent...